Thomas Rhett and Lauren Aikens are redefining what it means to be a country music couple. Here are some things you may not know about this adorable pair. Rhett and Aikens' love story began in the first grade. The future lovebirds were in the same class at Good Pasture Christian School in Madison, Tennessee. But Aikens didn't really notice her future hubby until the third grade, when he gave a memorable turn in a school production. In her 2020 memoir, Live in Love, Growing Together Through Life's Changes, she revealed, He played the lead in the school Christmas play, A Christmas Carol. Rhett played Scrooge, and he was great. The pair started going to the same church camp in sixth grade. And that's when Rhett began to develop romantic feelings for Aikens. In 2016, he told the Tennessean, She was just like the All-American, friendliest, nicest. She was tall, blonde, beautiful, pretty much the total package for any dude from sixth grade all the way through high school. I'm pretty sure every guy had a crush on her. Unfortunately for Rhett, the feelings were mutual back then, according to Aiken's memoir. When Rhett plucked up the courage to ask his dream girl to the end of summer banquet, it turned into, quote, the most degrading moment of his life. Aikens told her future husband at the time, Oh, I'm waiting on someone else to ask me. According to Aikens, she and Rhett had become good friends by the time they reached the ninth grade. The future singer-songwriter still hadn't gotten over her, however, and he was determined to get out of the friend zone. He decided to make his move when the two were messing around on a trampoline in his backyard one day. And it went terribly wrong. When Rhett leaned in to plan to kiss on his guest, the shift in weight led to a nasty collision. Aikens revealed in her book, We slammed our teeth into each other. It was bad. Rhett and Aikens' actual first kiss took place a couple of weeks later. While she admitted that she was a little weird out by the idea of locking lips with her longtime pal, the awkwardness quickly faded. She explained, It turns out that he was a pretty good kisser. Suddenly, it all felt really right. The pair began dating, and Rhett started to bring out Aiken's wild side. She admitted, He would not only be responsible for giving me my first sip of beer, but my first chew, my first dip, and my first cigarette. Neither of us smoke now, but I swear Rhett could talk me into doing just about anything, good or bad. And honestly, it's still the same today. The first major bump in the road for Rhett and Aikens came during spring break one year. The pair enjoyed a trip to Key West with friends when Rhett apparently started to get a little uptight about Aikens hanging out with other guys. Aikens revealed in her book, His jealousy and possessiveness kept showing itself again and again. He wanted to be with me all the time. This behavior would ultimately push Aikens away from her future husband and straight into the open arms of another boy. When he sat down for his 2016 Tennessean interview, Rhett revealed the exact moment he knew that things were over between them, saying, Mitch Barnes invited her to junior senior banquet, and that was the turning point. I was crushed. At this point, Aikens had decided that the two were better off remaining friends, and things would stay that way for some time. They both entered into committed relationships with other people. However, Rhett really never fell out of love with Aikens, and there's a famous photo of the young singer looking longingly at her as she poses for a snap with her date. When they were united for a graduation party in 2011, Rhett confided to Aiken's dad that he still loved her, and her father gave Rhett the push that he needed, saying, If you don't tell her how you feel tonight, I'm going to tell her myself. I remember telling her that I'd loved her since I was, I was 15 years old. The pair got back together that night, and just six months later, they were engaged to be married. The singer-songwriter spilled the beans about how he managed to win Aikens back when he spoke to Tastes of Country in September 2012. He explained, When I heard that she had ended her other relationship, this was last spring, I moved in for the kill. We kissed, and that was it. We dated for probably six months, and we got engaged last December around Christmas time. Festive engagements are always memorable, but Rhett made sure that his proposal was extra special, and he did that by bringing Aiken's mom into play. Rhett told the music mag that their families all went to a restaurant, explaining that he and Aikens are, quote, big on drinking wine and signing the bottles with a silver sharpie, then dating and saving the bottles. In keeping with their quirky tradition, Rhett escorted Aikens to a private room in the restaurant, where there was a single bottle of wine waiting. He explained, I pulled out a sharpie and put, marry me on the bottle. Her mom cued The Way You Look Tonight by Frank Sinatra and we danced. It was pretty awesome. Not long after their Hawaiian honeymoon, Rhett started to become a big star in the country music scene. For Aikens, this was both a blessing and a curse. In her illuminating tell-all, she said, I loved this man with everything in me, and his dreams are all coming true. But wouldn't you know it, right there in the middle of all that excitement and celebration, a familiar question came bubbling up in my mind. A question I've been struggling with for at least a couple years. I looked around the glittering lights and I wondered, what about my dreams? Aikens was training to be a nurse at the time, and following her husband around the country on exhausting tour, 
source, wasn't exactly helping with her studies. In her book, she revealed that it all came to a head one day in a church parking lot. She told her husband that she wasn't sure how much longer she could keep it up, and that put things into perspective for Rhett. He said of the incident, I was on the verge of calling my manager and telling her I quit. I was like, if every weekend off the road is gonna be sitting in this parking lot and having this conversation, it ain't worth it. I'll go do something different. Luckily for country music fans everywhere, Aikens told him that wasn't an option. Aikens eventually became a registered nurse as planned, and she's put her training to use in some of the most in-need parts of the world. In 2016, she set off for Uganda on a volunteer trip, unaware of the fact that she was on her way to meet her first daughter. Aikens worked closely with orphan children on her trip to the African country, and there was one child in need of a home who stole her heart. On the Kelly Clarkson show, she admitted, I was so moved. The second I touched her, it was electric. I was like, oh my word, this little girl has just taken my heart. When she spoke to Rhett later that night, she told told him that she was determined to find the girl a forever home in the United States. I was telling him her story and I was like, babe, we know so many people who are trying to adopt right now. But she didn't expect her husband to suggest making their own home that forever home. Aikens recalled in her book, With no hesitation, Rhett said, We'll do it. We'll bring her home. It would take months to get the paperwork sorted, but the girl who had been going by the name Blessing would eventually arrive in America. Rhett and Aikens decided to call her Willa Gray, named after some of their family members. I wanted a name that was really strong and um, something that, that empowered her. Rhett and Aiken's adoption of Willa Gray took longer than expected, because Uganda changed some laws while they were there in the middle of the process. Aikens went back and forth between the US and Africa on several occasions while they hammered out the details. And on one of those trips, she fell ill. She told People magazine, I was convinced it was food poisoning. I was 100% sure I was not pregnant. But she was pregnant, a fact that she discovered right in the middle of a safari ride. Aikens explained in her book, I wanted to tell our family so bad, but we decided to make it a big surprise. We wrapped a whole bunch of baby announcements and put them under the Christmas tree, so our whole family could open them all at once. Rhett and Aikens didn't reveal that they were pregnant in public until February 2017, when the double mom-to-be broke the happy news in a sweet Instagram post. She wrote in the caption, Our hearts are exploding with happiness for y'all to meet our new baby, who we are bringing home from Africa soon, who is also going to have a little brother or sister because, surprise, there's a sweet baby in my belly too. Little later, James joined the family exactly three months after Willard's adoption was finally approved. Tuck one in, read Goodnight Moon to another, <laughs> and then potentially walk on stage with pee on your finger. The couple welcomed the news that their first biological child was on the way. But for Aikens, being pregnant while adopting wasn't a walk in the park. She was left in charge of the process while Rhett concentrated on his career, and they quickly began to drift apart. During a 2020 appearance on The Bobby Bone Show, a singer-songwriter admitted that he was, quote, a bit jerky to his wife at the time. He said, Lauren called me because it was 9 o'clock in the morning in Uganda, and she hears all of her friends in the background. Meanwhile, Lauren is seven months pregnant and throwing up in the bathroom in Uganda. Aikens told Rhett that they were living two completely separate lives, but their rift continued to widen. According to Aiken's memoir, a fight broke out after the pair got a few deliveries. Some Gucci shoes arrived for Rhett, while Aiken's got some disinfecting wipes. And she told her husband, I think I hate you. The result was a quick call to their marriage counselor. They ended up spending two full days hashing things out, and it worked. In August 2020, Aikens told People magazine, We still are staying in close contact with our counselor, Beth. There's a lot of pressure to portray that you have a perfect life and family and marriage, especially on social media and in the public eye. Aiken's second pregnancy didn't go quite as smoothly as her first. The blonde mama told Country Living that she felt, quote, so much more pregnant, but she welcomed the third daughter, Lennon Love, with no complications in February 2020. Her proud husband took to Instagram to share the happy news with over 4 million followers, writing, It was such a joy to watch this little angel be brought into the world. My wife is just incredible through the entire birth. Watching our kids meet Lennon for the first time was probably the sweetest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Ada James and Willa Gray are going to be the best big sisters on the planet. Rhett went on to ask fans to pray for him and Aikens as they quote, switch from man-on-man -man defense to zone, using a basketball comparison to acknowledge the challenges that lie ahead. Three kids can be more than a handful, so they're going to stop there, right? Not necessarily. In her memoir, Aikens revealed that they haven't ruled out adopting again sometime in the future. She explained, We're both in a place where we love our little family so much. We keep thinking, how much more love would we be able to give if our family was just a little bit bigger? But that's a conversation for another time. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.